starting off en route to the trail. I'm a little bit guilty. I don't have my trusty hiking buddy with me today. Not by her choice, but by mine. We had rain early this morning. I wasn't expecting it that. It stopped raining, but that means there's gonna be a very muddy trail and I worry about her in the heat as well. As I've talked about in several previous videos, I get really frustrated with my progress how fast I get overheated, heart rate elevates, how quickly my breathing becomes labored. So I've done some research to try to look for strategies I can do to improve or alleviate some of that. And actually the one thing I came up with is incorrect breathing. I've arrived. So how can you screw up breathing? I mean, it's an instinct we're born with, right? Well, you may be surprised, as I was. <sighs> Keeping it real for you here today. There's a lot of dripping going on overhead. I'm not sure if it's actively raining or if it's just dripping still off of the trees. But I left my sunglasses by choice in the car, and now I'm regretting it. I'm only a, like maybe a half a mile in, and I'm ready to backtrack and get them just for the bugs because the gnats are horrendous and I'm in a really foul mood if you haven't been able to tell. Maybe it's like the guilt of Ella since I didn't bring her along. Anyway, onward and upward hopefully zap out of my funk and reap some benefits from this that I obviously really need. Over the last few weeks when I was prepping for my videos on meditation and hiking, I came across some articles specifically about the power of the breath, um, breathing techniques, particularly yogic breathing techniques to increase the physical endurance. <clears throat> I just caught a bug in my mouth. I did not swallow it, so <laughs> the bugs are raining on my parade here. Since I am familiar with yoga, I do practice it. Um, none of the concepts were foreign, so now I'm making a conscious effort of finding ways to incorporate that strategy of yoga breathing into my hiking. And now, for your benefit, so you don't have to keep watching me, A, eat bugs, sweat bugs and see make references to bugs that are bugging me and my foul mood. I'm just gonna shoot some video and then fill in what I want to say so we can all be more efficient and less annoyed by this kind of behavior. <laughs> I am gonna get happier. I am gonna get through this mood. Watch and wait. Here are the four takeaways from my findings on breathing for endurance. Start with posture and return to it as often as possible. It might sound ironic, but after stretching out my warmed up muscles, I like to start my hikes with a mountain pose. Standing tall, Shoulders down and back, spine aligned, chest cavity open. Lungs able to fully take in all the oxygen they want, are designed to, and need. The one consistent fact I found in my research was that breathing incorrectly can indeed lead to rapid fatigue and exhaustion. On the debate between nose versus mouth breathing, however, I found the typical conflicting opinions. While tough appeals seem to benefit from the extra, a faster intake of oxygen through the mouth, from my experience, the rest of the time I side with team nasal. 
Even if you have limitations and therefore no choice in that area, stick around, there's more for you too. Deep nasal breathing, controlling the breath in and out through the nose in an equal measure, as emphasized in yoga, allows you to hike longer and helps you to bring down rapid heart rate and heavy breathing when you realize that you're getting overly labored. Unless you're walking on those nirvana paths, I guess you want to call them, where it's just all peace with no challenge. And those are fine too. They all have their place, but hiking like this with the rocks and the roots, it's exhilarating and it's not for the faint of heart. You're not a wimp, that's for sure, if you can do this and you enjoy doing this and you come back for more. really hot as if I am right now obviously I'm very sweaty my heart rate is really high and I'm feeling very challenged I get into that mode and then I go into my breathing my yogic breathing and you know, instead of panting with my mouth open gasping for air which is kind of the instinct when you really get going especially when you go on those uphills and this kind of heat, you know, I gotta remember to shut my mouth or else I'm gonna get some unneeded protein. I have been training myself to focus on your breathing, focus on the sound of your breath. It will get your heart rate down. It will calm you. It looks a little and sounds a little something like this. helps me to get my heart rate down, gets me centered and grounded. So even out here, when I'm in the active part of hiking, my yoga comes into play. When it comes to chest versus belly breathing, the sides concur. Chest breathing doesn't fully fill the lungs with vital O2 levels. Some say only one third. Especially when you're exercising, you definitely need more. You breathe more efficiently from the belly or diaphragm area. Anyone who deals with anxiety is probably well aware, but think of how in times of panic, we breathe short, shallow, rapid breaths from our chest, and then often feel lightheaded, worn out afterwards even how we hold our breath when we have fearful moments. Self-sabotaging, really. Cutting ourselves off from what we need most when we need it most. The body is miraculously designed to take care of itself, so when all systems are healthy, why don't we just trust them to work as designed? Why do we get in the way? We all do it, and sadly, most of us don't even realize it until we're gasping for air, cold sweating, dizzy, sometimes annoyed that we aren't stronger, It's time to retrain our gray matter. If you take a moment to observe a typical breathing cycle and note the difference between breathing from the belly and from the chest by placing one hand on the abdomen and the other over your heart. When you consciously breathe more deeply, allowing the belly to fill or rise, then the chest, and then slowly with control, exhale, releasing the air from the chest first, then fully emptying out all of the air from the belly, your navel pushes back toward your spine. Even just a few breath cycles like that, you will become calmer, your heartbeat will slow to a more normal rate, and you'll be able to keep going. Belly breathing increases your lung capacity and it lowers your stress. So it's actually a good practice anytime, even when you're trying to relax. At least partially a piggyback effect of good posture. When you feel spent and still have miles to cover or want to recover at the end of a hike, try this strategy. Simply lift your arms over your head, opening up your chest 
and allowing more oxygen into your lungs. Walk this way until your breathing recovers. Seriously, this is my trail. There is a trail in here. You just can't really see it. They like a skating rink underneath in the mud. It's just like a mudslide under there. I am completely covered in sweat and every bug imaginable is coming at me, sticking to me, buzzing at my ear. My, my shoes are soaked, like all the way up to the top. If a photo is worth a thousand words, this video should be worth just as many. Oh my gosh, it is muggy, it is buggy, it is muddy, it is soupy, it's uncomfortable. Um, for any of you who remember the 80s and the aerobics fashion Jane Fonda flashback, my uh, buff is becoming that terracotta sweat band. Sometimes they put them on our wrists, we had wristbands. Yeah, even when we weren't working out, which was most of the time. But I am mopping the sweat with this thing. I'm trying to keep it over the top, at least the tops of my ears, or the, and immediately if I let it up, the mosquitoes and the gnats are back there. So believe it or not, I'm actually in a better mood. It just doesn't quite sound like it yet. Uh, but moving pretty gingerly because even though I don't have Ella, and I'm, I'm still glad that I didn't bring her because it would have been, I think, very uncomfortable for her as well. I have been using both trekking poles since I don't have her leash, and I'm using them to push aside all the stuff that's grown across the trail, the potential poison, the um, blackberry vines, really focusing on every step. So, and it's gotten me out of my head. I've been trying to focus on just staying safe not slip sliding too much. Controlling the flow and quality of your breath can improve hiking endurance. Also your heart health, your metabolism, your mood and your energy levels. And there's no need for special equipment. There's no cost. So it's little effort and investment for potentially big results. Give it a try. With conscious practice and slowly building up length, duration, and the regularity of hikes, and sigh, patience, our endurance will increase in its sweet time. Yes, physical conditioning strategies help, but don't neglect the mental conditioning. Keep your posture, proper alignment, and breath work in mind to give your lungs and the rest of your body the benefit of the oxygen it wants and needs so you can hike on and on. <laughs>